Are you ready to go around the world? Sit back, relax and buckle your seatbelt as we take off for an adventure. It's jet lagged free but filled full of fun and travel insights. The only thing you'll need to pack is a sense of humor. <laughs> Time for the award winning travel show Around the World. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brand, and welcome to Around the World Travel Show with Arthur von Wiesenberger. But Arthur isn't here today. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> he is doing another Around the World adventure to be named later, and I'm sure he'll come back and show us beautiful footage of where he goes. But co-hosting today is my dear friend, Deb Richards. I am so happy to be here. Thank you. <laughs> so, Deb, we want to hear a little bit about who you are. Well, I'm the author of the book called Shift and Shine, and I think through the holiday season or when you're traveling very important sometimes to shift your thought and shine your light oh my gosh especially for traveling traveling mm -hmm. can cause a whole lot of stress so shifting with those long airport lines i mean yes. the holiday season yeah worst. it really is well, let me tell you what's on the show today this is really exciting the first stop we're going to make is switzerland yay yes i just got back from switzerland with dear heidi stillwell and had the best time so we're going to talk about just stod switzerland and the adventures there and cheese tasting and this gorgeous hotel I stayed in and a horse um, gosh this horse-drawn carriage ride Ooh, uh, to go eat some more I really <laughs> ate my way through Switzerland I'd like to go with you and do that that well, sounds fantastic fun and you've been to Switzerland yes I went to Samaritz skiing absolutely spectacular so this is in the Alps too yes it's also Samaritz is very luxurious so is Gestad and so we have some of the history you'll find out about that because that might be your next stop in Ooh. Switzerland Mm. I can't wait. <laughs> and then we're going to go to Spain. Angelique Davis has arrived from a trip, and she's also this year's Primera Dama. Ooh. And that is uh, with our fiesta. And so it's so exciting to hear why she went to investigate Spain so she'd be better at her role. And her husband, Eric Davis, is also the um, Presidente. So they had a research, which is so cool. That is so cool. <laughs> We're also going to Lebanon with Kiva Hamilton. Oh, and I then we're with Katie Lindley is going to take us to Carmel by the sea. Lovely. And then to Karu no, to Aruba. Then we'll go to Cuba. <laughs> oh god. She's sick in her cough. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. It's all good. <laughs> to Cuba, where all those cigars can make you cough. Uh, with Liana Orsua and Carmen Benz. So stay with us. But first, let's see Gestad, Switzerland. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I'm Rebecca Brand, and this is my trip to Gestad, Switzerland. I went with my friend Heidi, we took the train, and then Gestad Palace Hotel, where we stayed, picked us up and took all of our luggage. Gestad Palace in Switzerland is part of the Swiss Deluxe Hotels Group, five-star hotels, luxury hotels in Switzerland. It was built in 1905 in a Swiss chalet style on a hill overlooking the town of Gestad. The hotel has been operated by the Schertz family ever since 1947 when it was sold because of financial struggles after the war. The rooms are unbelievable. Ours have this incredible balcony overlooking the town of Gestad and the mountains, the Alps. They were so thoughtful, they delivered snacks to our room. The room was huge, and it came with two twin beds. Heidi and I eventually moved them aside so we can both have a little privacy at night. The bathroom was tremendously large, and the spa tub was so inviting. It was all modern, with every amenity you could think of, even a bidet. I had never seen a hotel with a walk-in closet. I loved it. It was so spacious and a desk for me to work at. But what I really was thinking about was getting into that tub with a beautiful jacuzzi bath. So I filled it with bubbles and I looked out the window. Oh my gosh, it was such a heavenly experience. It felt so luxurious. Just dreaming away at the beautiful Alps in the background. The 
the main lobby is just beautiful. It's a five-star luxury class hotel. It was so fun to meet the people that actually were guests there. I met some very interesting gentlemen that actually sailed around the world a number of times. It was quite fascinating. The hotel is known to have many superstars, actors and actresses. It had Elizabeth Taylor visit, Richard Burton, Sophia Loren, Grace Kelly, Roger Moore, Michael Jackson, and many, many more. We had dinner at the Le Grand Restaurant. The dining experience is over the top. I enjoyed the most gourmet dinner with my friends Heidi, Beatrice, and Anna as we gave a toast to our trip and our stay there. The service was excellent, and there's the most delicious of local wines I had no idea they made in Switzerland. The food was amazing. This is a lobster salad they served as the beginning course. Then I had the rigatoni with a beautiful eggplant, and that pasta was homemade. That was amazing. And off I went to a gastronomical delight. That sea foam on that fish. And then I had a venison tenderloin that was made perfectly. It was so delicious and tender. It was almost for tender. Ah. Mm. <laughs> yum, yum. I dined with the general manager, Anna. She was a delight and told me so much history about the hotel and the services it offered. And then that's the executive chef. His name is Franz Faye. And he gives wings to the palace cuisine. Franz came out to talk to me and I was so excited to learn his recipe on that sous vide venison. We discussed the temperature to cook at. I didn't believe him when he told me the temperature, which was 122 degrees, because I thought it should be 126 degrees for that perfect medium rare. He was a delight as we went back and forth. And then he left the table, and I thought he was gone for good. But no, <laughs> we all had a good laugh about that. And then later, after a few toasts, he showed me and he proved to me in this book that he wrote, Classical Cooking the Modern Way. This is his book. What a delight that he came out and shared it with me. We made up, we understood the right temperature, now I know, and then me and Heidi continued to have the best time with our dear friends at this dinner. Oh, and then here comes the dessert wine, which I love. It was just amazing how many different varieties they have in Switzerland. Oh, and the cheese plates. That is the best. We had a beautiful waiter come and talk to us about every kind of cheese we were about to try. Some were cow cheeses, some were goat cheeses. It was so interesting, the flavors, because in America, we just don't have this type of rich, delicious cheese. Which led me to go visit where they make the cheese, high in the Alps. The Gestalt Palace Hotel arranged for us to visit this cheese factory. Well, actually, it's a former underground reservoir owned by a local dairy. It's called the Malkerie Gestad. And you have to go down very, very, very steep steps. A ladder, really. And then you get to this place where they're aging all kinds of cheese. There's 3,100 wheels of cheese that weigh a total of over 30 tons. And rumor has it that if they stacked each of these wheels on top of each other, it would be higher than any building in Switzerland. Can you imagine that? That was amazing. This piece of cheese was 150 years old. We were so lucky to get a full grand tour. The cheesemaker explained the process of making the cheese, and then he gave us samples. We got to try them. They were wafer thin. They almost was like a Parmesan, but not really a very different taste of cheese, so I had to try it. It was delicious. And of course, I tried it with my wine. That was made in Switzerland. Beatrice loved it too. We all had a great time that day. What a great excursion, and I have to recommend doing this when you stay at Gestalt Palace. Yum, I even sliced them myself. 
guided tour included driving by a lot of real estate up in the Alps. It's known that the chalets in the Swiss Alps go for about $35 million. I could not believe the price of real estate, and they say it's of the most expensive in the world. And then it was time to go to Stad Palace Spa. What an experience. It's a completely high-end luxury spa with indoor pools, a lovely gathering area, beautiful fire in the middle of that. Could you imagine? I just wanted to relax on all of the beautiful couches. And the pool is an indoor-outdoor pool. There are snacks everywhere you look. In about every room, they have something in case you need a refreshment. They have a weight room where you can work out. Oh, and the relaxation room was really marvelous. You can go down there and just recline and relax, maybe with a friend or your husband. And out you can look at the beautiful Alps that fall before you. And there's the side of the hotel. Beautiful palace, beautiful architecture in a beautiful garden. But the indoor-outdoor pool was calling me. The water was really warm. The sauna was amazing. And then I saw the foot spa. That was the most unique feature. I've never seen anything like that before. So I took one. It was so relaxing. My feet always seem to ache when I do all the walking when I'm touring. The hotel also arranged a wonderful horseback ride. So Beatrice, Heidi, and I went along about a 40 minute drive in a horse-drawn carriage. It was a rainy, beautifully atmospheric day. So I got to look out the back at the forest and the beautiful scenery. It was unbelievably just dreamy. Our destination was this wonderful chalet that had a restaurant inside off by a lake. It was warm and cozy and just a place to stop with my girlfriends as we looked at the menu and decided what we were going to have and that would be plum cake with homemade whipped cream. Oh yeah! But then, to top it off, I had Swiss chocolate milk. Yummy! That's a sugar high for the afternoon. And then back to the horses. I got to pet them and it was time to go back home to the beautiful hotel that we were staying at, the Gestad Palace, which by the way, is owned by Andrea Shorts. He's the 2019 Hotelier of the Year. His family has collected all these matchbooks from all kinds of places around the world, so I had a fun time looking at the nostalgia. And then once again, time for an amazing dinner. And here we go again with all the great food. I just love the food created by Chef Franz, including many tableside preparations. The fish was just delicious. And after dinner, we got to listen to the nightclub singers. Beautiful music for the beautiful ambiance. But then it was time to kick things up. And we went to the Gringo nightclub where the return of the Pink Panther with Peter Sellis was filmed. That was filmed right there at the Gestad Palace back in 1975. And it's still happening now. But the night ended, time for breakfast, and then on to the train I went for the next part of my journey. I'm Rebecca Brand. Stay with me for more great travel adventures like this one to the Gestad Palace in Switzerland. Oh my gosh, that looked like the most amazing trip. I want to go to the Cheese Castle. That looked fantastic. <laughs> the Church of Cheese. The Church like, oh of gosh. Cheese. It was just amazing. It just I just can't tell people enough about how incredible it was. And the Swiss Deluxe Hotels Group has 40 different hotels in Switzerland. They're all five star. Wow. Um, they're just the most amazing. You know, the Swiss is also known to be the best hoteliers in the world. They have the best hoteliers. 
schools, they really know hospitality. So um, check, check. I'm putting that, that on my list. Yeah. Putting that on my list. Anybody watching that's inspired to go to Switzerland, check out what they have for their hotels. Well, next up, we're going to go to Spain yeah. and uh, with Angelique Davis. So stay with us. Water, the essence of life, flowing from Mother Earth, gathering essential minerals, trace elements and vitality as it journeys to the surface, collected fresh and pure from springs around the world, each one as unique as a fingerprint. The world's best bottled waters are waiting for you at bottledwaterweb.com. <laughs> so cute. And we're back on Around the World, and we're so excited to be here with all these great places we're going to. But I gotta tell you, I'm missing our dear Arthur. Oh, I'm so sorry, you know, it's, honey. It's, it's a busy time of year, and Arthur has lots of good places and great things to go and do that he brings us back to around the world. But it's always sad when Arthur's not here. Um, I get to fill in, which is fun with you, but it's like, ah, we miss Arthur. He'll be back soon. <laughs> He'll be back soon. Yeah. So our next guest has Angelique Davis, who's also the primera dama of Fiesta. And so she went to Spain, and we want to hear the whole thing that we were talking about. You went to Spain to do what? Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where do I start? Um, I went to Spain because, well, first I love Spain. I love going to Europe, and we've been to Spain before. But um, this year I happen to have um, a special reason to go to Spain because my husband's going to be El Presidente in 2020. <gasps> wow. wow, and your husband's Fantastic. name is? Eric, Eric Davis. Mm -hmm. And so that makes me the Primera Dama, First Lady. I love that, the Primera Dama name, <laughs> the Primera Dama. Cool. Yes. So what we wanted to do is kind of just explore some costumes and different things there, um, kind of immerse ourselves in the culture. And then we also wanted to go to Sevilla, Seville, because we wanted to go to the Feria de Abril, What's which that? is a once a year event that if, for those of you who know Fiesta in Santa Barbara, it's a phenomenal event. 100,000 people come to Santa Barbara. It's wonderful. Um, in Sevilla, it's about 10 times as big. It's very Gosh. similar. It's a week-long um, festival, and it's just amazing. They've, I've got some pictures to show you, but it's it's really special. What a so, research trip! I know. That's so all, here we, we go. went Here's looking at. Oh, oh. there's Eric and I on our last day of our event. We had actually gone shopping, so those are a couple of uh, costumes we wore. And in, in in Spain, the the women wear the flowers right on top of the head, just like that. Beautiful. <laughs> So, oh wow! Top yeah. with the top with the rose. That's yeah. so pretty. That was thank you. Yeah. So lots of fun. We started our trip in Madrid, and then we went to Seville, and we did a day trip. So that's and we did a lot of shopping. And similar to your wonderful video of Switzerland, we ate a ton. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, food. Oh, the food was spectacular. Oh yeah, that's another night shot of the Feria de la Bril. It's so the, all those dresses they're wearing, you were looking for dresses like that? Yep, in your, similar. In your so those are, um, those are authentic um, dresses from Spain. The women there, all of them get decked out. Um, some of the dresses, I mean, they must have spent thousands of dollars on their dresses, but nearly every single woman in Sevilla was totally dressed up. It was it's amazing to see. And the men dress up as well. So it's really exciting to see them really get into the spirit. And they, they have outfits for every single night of the week. It's seven wow. nights. And sometimes they actually dress um, three times a day because it starts in the morning, then it's an afternoon, and then it goes into the evening. Wow. And we left for our um, flight the next morning. Is this a market? At six in the morning. Uh, it's actually, the, there's a section of town where they set everything up. And um, that's where that is. So there's a thousand of those little tents. And families buy the, or rent the tents. And there's between 100 and 300 people in each tent. There's a thousand tents. Wow! So think about how many people are there. Oh, that's it's huge. Tremendous. And, and that's part. There's more of the tents I see. And the oh, there, literally, there's a thousand tents, and there's carriages and horses, and there's just a woman carrying her child. Um, but yeah, it's it, it was pretty epic. But 
six o'clock in the morning, we're heading to the airport and we see people stumbling home. <laughs> They stay out all night long. Yeah, they stay out all night long. So, did you so, come back with some um, outfits for Fiesta or some did. ideas? We did. A little bit of both. A little bit of both. Yeah. I got um, the dress that I was wearing there. So, that was from Spain. And then I got the shawl and some flowers. And then I got one other dress there that I'm excited to, to wear this coming Fiesta. For which event? Stick. That is still to be determined. <laughs> I, I'm trying to figure it out. We've got a lot of different events coming up. So, we're going to still have lots of. Uh, things to think about. Oh wow, because yeah. that's, I mean, there's a lot to do. I bet you're just uh, swamped with the planning for Fiesta, are you guys? Yeah, well we've been on the board for a little while, so we've been on the board for about 10 years already, so I, I know what to expect. Uh, I know what's coming. We've just got a little bit more of a visible role this year than, than normal, but it's Is there any big changes happening at Fiesta this year? Uh, no, not really. No, we like, we like tradition, we like to do um, we want to make sure that we put on the best show we possibly can for the community. So it's going to be another wonderful year and a lot of exciting things to come. So uh, first event up is in April with the Spirit of Fiesta auditions. And then we roll into the Primavera party in May and then it's Ranchera in June and then Fiesta is going to start at the end. Well, actually, August 3rd. Oh, what's that? Oh, this is actually in Sevilla. This is the Royal Alcazar Gardens. And if it looks familiar, it's because if you are a Game of Thrones fan, that's where they filled part of Game of Thrones. Oh, oh. really? Yes. Um, but yeah, that's just one of the beautiful places in Sevilla that you can visit those gardens. Um, and so those buildings look like they might be 500 years old there in Probably, Sevilla. if not long, if not older. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. I don't know how Did old you they get are. to see any flamenco dancing while you were there? That's a great question. Yes. Like every night of the week we tried to see flamenco. And in Spain it's everywhere. Uh, oh, we were seeing I don't know what that was, but Oh yeah, we were seeing it's uh what is that? Oh, that's the cathedral in, in Sevilla. So uh, you'd be surprised because it doesn't look like anybody's there, but that square is usually filled with hundreds of people. Um, but that is a beautiful cathedral and you can go up to the top. I think there's another photo of seeing it from above, um, but it's really beautiful there. So. And what town again was the cathedral in? Uh, that was in Seville. In Seville. Mm -hmm. That's actually the birthplace of flamenco. So yeah, that's it from, from above and uh, it's got beautiful views from up there. It's, it's a neat spot to go. But um, back to your flamenco question, there are people, you can go to professional flamenco shows, which we did quite a bit, but we also went to just um, flamenco that's just on the street. There's women and men that are dancing. Um, they're like buskers and they just dance for money and they're phenomenal. They're incredible, incredible dancers. In fact, there's places that you can go where the professional dancers will go after their shows and it's, you know, just the price of a um, $2 glass of wine and a beer and you're watching the best flamenco you've ever seen. Because you're sitting in an outdoor yeah. cafe. And that's in Madrid. Oh. That's at um, Plaza Mayor in Madrid and this woman was just dancing her heart out. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. And she brought a guitarist so that she could dance to the beat it looks they, like. They do that too. Yep. Well, there's always a little bit of music accompaniment. Sometimes it's just a little boom box that they press the button and sometimes they bring you know, they're musicians and suddenly you've got a, a free show and you just sit there and have a little cafe or whatever you want to drink and enjoy. And so the weather, how was the weather when, when you went and what month Phenomenal. Did you go? We went at the end of April, beginning of May. That's, it was actually my birthday. So we celebrated my birthday too there. And um, it was great because the, the weather was great. There wasn't a lot of crowds. It was a nice time to go. My goodness, that sounds just the best. I've not been to Spain yet. Where is that? So that's also in Madrid. So you, it's, this was an unexpected treat. There's a park, um, it's called Retirio Park. And you could get a boat and go out on this little pond and it's just in the middle of Madrid and it's kind of tucked away. And I mean, Madrid is a pretty major metropolis and lots of big buildings and it's, it's an older town, but there's a unexpected parks and things that you can find in Madrid even. So talk about the food. Gosh, the food. The food is amazing. The tapas, um, being able to just go from restaurant to restaurant. I, I want to say that on my birthday we had 
two breakfasts, three lunches, and three dinners. Because <laughs> <laughs> we just kept going That's to different amazing. place to place to place, and, and just having really small dishes. You know, just whether it was um, you know fresh fish or um, shrimp, or there was always like some kind of meat and different things like that. And you and could pinatas just pinatas or uh, we didn't have a lot of uh, that kind of food, but it was more like maybe on a little crust of bread, and then it was you know, maybe a piece of um, pork or something was on top and it, it was just delicious. Everything we ate was superb. Wow, oh, that sounds so wonderful. Yeah, that's terrific. And yeah. so do um, you think you'll go back? Oh, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> I don't know when, but I love it there. It's a great, great place, yeah. So um, there's an interesting place that I don't know if we have time to, to show it, but right outside of Sevilla, there is a place called Italica and it dates back to 206 BC. Whoa. It's You're a, kidding no, me. No, it's a Roman amphitheater. I didn't even know it existed. You'd think it would be like on all the guidebooks, but it, um, we stumbled across it and it was amazing. And it, once again, Game of Thrones was filmed there, um, but it was the third largest in the Roman Empire at the time, seating 25,000 spectators. Wow. Oh my gosh, what a lot of history. <laughs> That's I don't amazing. I have a picture. But I would recommend going there too, Italica. People should look Italica. it up. Italica. So oh, interesting. Great. And Let's we took, we took a city notes. bus. We didn't even take a tour. We took the city bus. It was like, you know, three euro to go out there. And it was incredible. Well, thank you so much for sharing your trip, Angelique. Oh, and, you're most welcome. Um, we want you back for your next excursion. <laughs> and uh, everybody, we'll see you and everybody else at Fiesta. Thank this you. Year. Thank up. you. Viva la Fiesta. Viva la. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Next up, we have Hiba Hamden, who went to Lebanon. So we can't wait to see Lebanon, Spain, Lebanon, Cuba, it's Carmel. We've got such a great show. Everything's Stay coming with today. <laughs> And welcome back to Around the World. And we're missing Arthur today. He's somewhere else around the world. I'm sure he is. He's going to bring us back a good piece, we hope. Of well, that would be his, so exciting. Of his experiences, because he really knows how to travel. But I tease Arthur, because in a lot of ways, I think he's the most interesting man in the world. Because he's always popping up with, where is he now? Where am I? What am I doing? Or, he has this little line, he says, um, what in the world? What and where in the world? It's like, ah. So you have to guess. It's a little guessing game. Anyways. That's, that's a great game. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you, Arthur. Um, right now, we're going to go to Lebanon, though, with Heba Hamden. And welcome to the show, Heba. Nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Here Tell us go. a little bit about yourself, Heba. Well, um, I was born and grew up in Lebanon. Uh, it wasn't a good time, though. It was the Civil War, 15 years. It was tough. Uh, but it made me who I am today. It, you know, gave me compassion and all of the great qualities and just let's forget about the other bad times. Uh, then I uh, moved to North America and uh, I've been in California for 20 years. I've worked mostly uh, in telecommunication until the last two years where I joined TV Santa Barbara. So that was brand new to me, media and all was going here at the station is brand new but i love it oh thank you and so we want to get into this trip and we hear you brought us back a video when was this trip to lebanon uh we visited different places uh we visited uh, biblos um see uh, beginning of the summer and uh lebanon is very much like california it's mm -hmm. a mediterranean uh, country uh, and the difference 
uh, between Lebanon and other Mediterranean countries like Italy or Greece or Spain is that it doesn't train during the summer in Lebanon. So it's very much like here in California. So mm -hmm. you can plan trips. So is this so Lebanon? Place. Yes. This is Biblos. And um, the Arabic name is Jubail, but historically it's known as Biblos. If you Google it, Biblos Lebanon, you'll find it. So this is a Mediterranean. Over here, the sandy beach doesn't show, it's on the other side, but uh, you will soon see the old port of Byblos. It's where uh, the Phoenicians went out to the world and they were the first sailors in the Mediterranean, probably after the Chinese sailed uh, in the China and the Indian Ocean or Pacific Ocean, but in the Mediterranean the Phoenicians were the first sailors. And um, many people don't know that the alphabet that we use in English even, or you know, French, other languages, is originally or came from the Phoenician alphabet. They invented the abstract alphabet. Uh -huh. uh, hieroglyph in Egypt is older, but hieroglyph, like you say a bird, and then you draw a bird. It's like it's an emoji a drawing. language. We just saw something there mm -hmm. on, on the screen. Yes. They're originals with emojis. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so the uh, Phoenician alphabet was was invented around uh, 3,500 BC before Christ. So it's already about 5,000 years that this has been in existence. And the Phoenician took it to do trades and discover uh, other places, and they taught it over the Mediterranean. Uh, there is a theory that they got to America, also the continent here, long time ago. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and uh, by the way, Biblos is considered to be the oldest living city with the same um, uh, people living in the same place. This is, this is the old port of Biblos and the old town. Beautiful. Uh, so it is there with the same people since 5000 BC. Gosh. Is it geographically isolated from other places? Is that what? No, it's another city on the Mediterranean. You know, like Beirut. It's north of Beirut, the capital. Okay, so, so the people north. just stayed there. They had enough to eat, they had enough to build a civilization. So the genetics, when you say the same people, the same heritage, stayed there. They didn't migrate away. They stayed there because life was good, it sounds like. <laughs> uh, what I meant is um, they didn't move somewhere else. It could be a different generation because Lebanon uh, historically was invaded by the Romans, by the Greeks, by, uh, also with the Islamic uh, expansion. Uh, that's why it uh, was named Jbeil, uh, but the people, the original people of uh, Jbeil didn't move uh, to other locations and it stayed inhabited, whereas other cities were destroyed either uh -huh. by earthquakes, mm -hmm. by wars, whatever mm -hmm. other reasons, uh, but Jbeil stayed the same. If you Google Biblos Lebanon, mm -hmm. uh, you'll find this information. And uh, this is uh, Haris and the city of Juni, which is another uh, Mediterranean city. And um, this is a huge statue of Virgin Mary, and it's called Harissa is um, the, uh, the, the caring, is the, the protector. And this is one of the titles given to Virgin Mary. And uh, people go there, you can climb climb up to the top and you see the Mediterranean, you see Jbeil underneath and it's all uh, red tile. It's another Mediterranean town uh, like you could see in France or Spain or here in Santa Barbara. Red tiles, old oh, buildings. Oh, so pretty. That's amazing. So Santa Barbara has a little tiny bit of, of, of that. Of the Mediterranean. <laughs> it's called the uh, Californian Riviera. 
it's like a French Riviera and uh, yep it reminds me a lot so I feel uh, very much uh, um, like where I grew up and I connect with with all what's around the trees uh, it's the same fruits same vegetables everything reminds me where I was born where I grew up so it's, it's a nice feeling it's my new home but feels like double home <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. so great there you are yes um, uh, that picture was in the cedars and uh, it, it may not be seen uh, clearly but here I had the TVSB shirt. Ah, that's great. That's fantastic. <laughs> so I'll say TV Santa Barbara went to Lebanon. It's, it's in all the places. We are bringing the station here all around the world. Oh, that's Whoa. so sweet. That's so great. And sharing it. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. And then, oh, there you and are. That's There's, another is that one of the trees? Of the oh, yeah. gosh. And these are, you know, like thousands and thousands dozens of thousands old wow. these trees and they're so healthy to be green like that and they're that old of a tree yeah what's the deal with that do you know I don't know I mean it's the geography of that area the weather and that's how there's no uh, beetles that eaten it oh there's another one yeah and this is called Lamartine tree is uh, the French uh, poet and author used to go there and sit underneath that particular cedar tree and write and uh, you know uh, just That's think wonderful. it's peaceful yeah. place so they it call it been. yeah since he used to go there they kind of labeled it with his name Lamartine oh wow wow An inspiring place yes yes and this what is this um, this is in fact the American University of Beirut and can you see how gorgeous the location is? Yes, the ocean. It's by the Mediterranean, you go can go from the campus to swim over there, and then go back to the library. One of these red tile buildings uh, is the library, Jeffet Library of the American University of Beirut, and it's all the campus with uh, the buildings where the professors uh, live. Oh, Hiba, it's just been so wonderful to travel with you to Lebanon today. <laughs> pictures are gorgeous and it's so wonderful to hear your story and and your love of Santa Barbara and and for you to bring your love of your country to here to, to share with us so, oh, it's so sure. great to sure. hear about it um, one last thing I would like to share uh, which is uh, not known to many people here in the US is that uh, Lebanon um, is a democracy so it's not like a kingdom like other countries in the Middle East um, it is not a, a Muslim uh, country it's a democracy uh, the Muslims are like 60% of the population but the, the rest 40% are Christians and you can find the churches and mosques and all next to each other over there and it's a mixed culture and with all the generations or and all what the Lebanese have seen uh, through the years having welcomed the, the Romans the Greece as I said and originally with the heritage of the Phoenicians it's a wonderful place and if it's not for what the weather and the history and beautiful places for me I would go there for the food <laughs> that sounds great. So, Lebanese time. so go and we'll get some more food shots that time. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming and we're gonna um, take a break here and when we come back we're going to go to Carmel by the Sea with Katie Lindley. Mm, that sounds Stay lovely. Stay with us. <laughs> okay. Hi, and welcome back to Around the World. We're on our way to Carmel today with Katie Lindley. Welcome, Katie. Thank you. Hi, I'm happy Katie. to be here. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> nice to see you. We got to hear what was behind the trip to Carmel by the Sea. Well, it's where I like to land for my birthday. Ooh. And so my husband, two years ago, said, where do you want to go for your birthday? I want to take you to Maui. And I'm, I'm like, I really want to go to Carmel. And my daughter said, really? Maui, Carmel, Maui, Carmel? You can do to Carmel in a long weekend. So we ended up in Maui. Then a year later, where do you want to go for your birthday? Carmel. 
So he surprised me with a hotel room in Carmel, but it wasn't in the Golden Triangle. There's a Golden Triangle in Carmel that where you can walk everywhere in town, you can go to the beach, you can walk to the theater, um, you can walk to all the restaurants. It was outside of that, and I go, what? That's where you got the hotel room? No. So he got a second hotel room in the Golden. Ooh. Oh, and then you got to walk to the beach. And then it was walking distance to the beach. So tell us about this picture. Where are you? Right um, in Carmel, where it goes around the corner actually to Clint Eastwoods to um, the Carmel River. So right there is at the corner, the big huge beach there in Carmel Beach. Oh, that's so pretty. That's so nice. Yeah. So you had two hotel rooms. So we did. We invited other people to go stay in the other one because oh, we paid great. for it. What a lovely husband. Yeah. Isn't that nice? So nice. It's like they will learn. <laughs> That's encouraging. <laughs> so, yes. yes, and so um, maybe introduce a little bit about yourself, um, and we'll get the next picture up. But they need to know where this wonderful sense of humor comes from, and uh, who you are, and that your book. Because I just think we have to get to that Thank because you. we'll now know the sense of humor is so much fun. Thank you. Yes. Um, so I moved to Santa Barbara four and a half years ago, and I met my husband within weeks, and we became friends. There's a little backstory to that, but we became friends, and then eventually we started dating, and that was it. Got together, and that was it. And during that time, I wrote this book. And what's well, the title? I finished it. It's it's a man for every purpose. My naked journey searching for love. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. And it's really actually about a girl who goes on a journey looking for herself through relationships with men. So she's trying to figure out this isn't working with men, this isn't working. And so she's really trying to understand herself through all the relationships she's choosing, you know, from the father all the way down. Uh, don't us women always have these men issues? So that's a very funny book though. It's got so much humor in it. it so, this, so this could be, so you're talking about this trip to Carmel and I know you just energize your life with your fun sense of um, is self-awareness or self-introspection. So we're going to look at some more pictures and okay. tell us more about your trip, but I wanted them to know about that book right away because, um, because you're, you're, you're so much um, oozing out your inner self as you explain. Your oh, I love Carmel. It's one of my favorite places in the world. A Amanforeveryperpose.com would be how to get your hands on the book, but there, that's just the beauty of Carmel. It holds my heart, Carmel. By the sea, it just does. It's the sound of it, the the oceans rushing, the wind, um, the, the the vistas, the beautiful rocks. It's just mysterious, and it's just so raw. It's, it's got this. It's an artist's place, and it smells. You get out of the car, it smells like salt air, jasmine flowers blooming and wood burning fireplaces and it's just like oh there it is it's like when you get off a plane to hawaii you get captured with the pineapple and the yeah. plumeria so carmel has its own fragrance and it's beautiful i love it, it speaks to my soul yes oh, i have to agree i love trips there. do you love carmel we should go and then you it. also did something very special in carmel um, I think we're going to get to we some did. pictures about what, what happened there. Well, we were walking along the beach and we see this, we go up and over the cliff. The cliff is in the next shot, I think. And we see these people doing a seal rescue Whoa. and they have to bring, they have to bring like a board and carry the seal into the carrying case. But it was over a huge cliff and these people weren't quite as beefy as my husband. <laughs> yeah, Scott's really an athlete. He's an athlete. He had a, he, they were struggling picking up this poor seal, and Scott said, wait, I'm going to help you. And so he just took over, as he does so well, with the two hotel rooms and rescuing the seal. And he just picked up the seal, and he told them which way, this is how we're going to go, and this is how we're going to carry the seal. So it was really fun. And they said, well, what should we name the seal? because we get to choose its name. Because you help rescue it. Yeah, and I think we chose Teeter. <laughs> <laughs> That's Scott's last name. It's Scott's last name. So Katie Lindley Teeter. Yes. 
is a yes. possibility for you. There he is. There's Scott Teeter on rescuing oh. the seal. And he is a big, yeah, he's he a big guy. Very he, strong. I know he does biking around town. He likes his own He bike does riding. do biking and skiing. He's in, now he's in, back into yoga. Wow. Which is good because as we get older, we lose our flexibility. We got to keep stretching, right, Debbie? Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell us some other. How was the food? Did you eat a lot of food? Thank you. I wanted to tell you about Casanova's. What's that? Casanova's is a restaurant in Carmel that has been around for since the 80s, forever. And it is a little Italian place, extremely good food. And when you order a bottle of wine, you can ask the sommelier if he will take you to the wine cellar. The wine cellar was dug out by hand. It's, it's, it's underneath the restaurant. It's like having a special ticket into something you don't even know about. So we went there and we saw bottles and bottles that were just irreplaceable and he, it, the, it was fantastic. And the food is delicious. Oh my goodness, I have not heard of that. Casanova's is that it there? Cas that? Yeah, I, I sent a picture of Casanova's. It's really special. So that's at it? Katie, did you just put yes. the screen up? Yes, okay. yes. So we, we're sitting Ooh, it outside. It looks very rustic. It's beautiful. It's really special. And that's in the heart of the town? or where It is. is. It is in the Golden Triangle, okay. which now Scott knows what exactly that means. Exactly where it is, <laughs> yes. For next time. Yes. <laughs> well, we so appreciate you coming today for this show. Oh, thank um, you. Show us your book again. Yes. Well, I brought several because everybody needs to read a copy. Hand so, me one. Yes. So this is what it looks like. It's called yes. A Man for Repurpose. And where can we buy it, Katie? You can buy it online. Where? Um, Amazon. Amazon.com. Amazon. We, we actually love Amazon. We love Amazon. Well, Rebecca, you have it on your Amazon site. I do. I have an influencer uh, shopping mall. And we also have <laughs> my name on Amazon, including Deb's book and your book. Yes. And, and we, Debbie Hill's book. We have um, a man for every purpose.com. That's as simple as it gets. Good. It is. goes straight over to the Amazon site. Oh, really? That's great. It's oh, very relatable. So if you date. Way down, nice guy. Isn't that great? <laughs> I love the titles of this. What is, <laughs> back into the shark tank. Oh, gosh. Ferrari man. Ooh. Oh, really? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the chapter. I want to read that. I love Ferrari. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's one <laughs> of those dates great. that you can't even believe it happened. <sighs> Well, yeah. I like yeah. those well, kind yeah. memorable. This is going to be interesting. So it we're is. running out of Thank time. You. we got to say goodbye to you for Thank now. Thank you so much. Please come back on your next trip. I would love to. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to see you beautiful ladies. <laughs> Lovely to see you as well. I can't mm. wait to read your book. <laughs> Wonderful. And stay with us as we go back. We come back and we're going to go to Cuba next with Liana and Carmen. Stay oh, with us. Fabulous. <laughs> Time. So glad you're my best friend Through thick and thin We'll see things through Canine of mine, so true Get the A to Z on adoptable pets at AnimalZone.org Bonjour Alex Bonjour Renaud Happiness, it's great food prepared the French way. Chocolate eclair. What makes you happy? A touch of Paris. Without the trip to France. Handcrafted daily in our bakeries, especially for you. Indulge yourself. Bon appétit. Please visit Renault's in Gelson, Santa Barbara, Long Beach, and La Cañada, Flint Ridge. And welcome back to Around the World. We're missing Arthur today because he's somewhere else around the world. Yes, he is. But he's not in Cuba. But who's just come back from Cuba is Liana Ursua and Carmen Benz. And we are so excited. I'm so excited that they're here today because I've been watching their whole trip on Facebook. And it's been fascinating. <laughs> so I just tugged and tugged. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Rebecca. It's Thank nice you. to be here. Yes. And so what brought on this trip? Well, it started with a friend of mine who is born, born and raised in Cuba, but has never been to Cuba. He uh, moved from Cuba to the United States when he was four and had always longed to go back and had been telling me how much he wanted to visit Cuba and see where he came from for many years. And I finally just nudged him and said, when are you going to go? And if you don't have anyone to go with, I'll go with you. And then it kind of um, just sort of evolved from there. And, and then it grew. How and many people grew. went all in all? So altogether, five of us. 
So we started with one girlfriend and then a couple other girlfriends got involved and then so it became five of us. Yeah. Yeah, oh, Carmen, where were you on the on the on the sign up order there? I don't know. I think Nareet and I came in um, on the. Uh, I think it was three of you, and then yeah. you asked us if yeah. we wanted to do it, and we're like, of course we do. You know, it sounds like an amazing experience. And, and you had you made a video. We yeah. can't wait to see the video. Hey, let's roll the video, Mike. Let's see the video. Here it comes. So impressed when I saw this. Oh, here we go. So talk to us. So what this we is see? driving through the um, old Havana, Havana Vieja, and it's um, you know El Floridita right there. That's a really famous um, bar and club where live music is played. You can see the colonial architecture is just really impressive in Havana and. Um, so this is just driving through. The taxi driver we had was a great taxi driver. This is Vinales, mm -hmm. um, where we went in uh, the sun in the valley. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous place to be. I mean, we we had lunch there right here from this view you're seeing, and it was really something special. So yeah, that's we did a, a really neat tour where we got the chance to walk through the valley. We met the um, tobacco farmer and he showed us how he rolls the tobacco and we actually bought some from him. Um, and then we just did a walking tour through all these fields and we got to see livestock. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful area. We had some live music. Um, it was always, the music in, in Cuba is just incredible. I mean, so much expression and um, street street artists um, oh, wow. this is a band play there's like a drum band playing and then these um, people on stilts <laughs> fun very lively very festive them. this was on Sunday this was, I, I think they do this every Sunday there that was kind of fun this guy is dancing with one of the <laughs> stilt dancers it's another video of us um, driving um, over in old Havana and this is the Maracon so it's the beautiful um, boardwalk where the water is and um, is that a pink Cadillac you guys are yes, yeah so the taxis there you know they are those old vehicles those classic cars and um, you know this is one of them a pink uh, convertible so much fun is that right a lot of the this. taxis like that they are Woo. we think that's actually who makes the most money in Korea <laughs> yeah, are the, the taxi, the taxi drivers, drivers of those because it's really um, it's Everybody wants to go in them. Yeah. They can kind of name their price. Exactly. Oh, really? <laughs> so, so, you, so you say, hey, I'm going to go so far, and what's the price on that? Yeah, I, had to, I had to have the pink because I like pink. So um, <laughs> I insisted on jumping in a pink car. <laughs> yes, I'm glad she did. It was really fun. That's great. Oh, my gosh. So we're going to go to the pictures now because you've got a lot of fun pictures. In fact, I see one in that pink Cadillac. <laughs> and I think that he's going he's gonna to put up next. There we go. Okay, so tell us. Those oh, are the that girls so on fun. the trip. Yeah, so that's all of us. I think we paid um, someone to take some photos of us. <laughs> and, um, Did you really? Seriously. You Did know, they, they just pay the money? You and say, hey, here's my bucks. phone, and you hope that the phone yeah. comes back. Right. And Frank, right. Frank, who is our, our Cuban friend, is right in the middle. Do you he's see him? Hard he's, to oh, see. gosh, he's he kind of blends in with the side. <laughs> he's right in the middle. He's kind of oh, low. so funny. He's got these four women surrounding him, but right. there he is. Like, he's the king of the Cadillac. His esposas. <laughs> That's we were his. It's, it's esposas like his wives. like his ten esposas, huh? <laughs> <laughs> or five. Four. It was, it four. Was, he was pretty lucky. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. pretty. Is that you, Liana? Yes, this is in this, what was the name it's of that? It's the Callejon. It's the Afro-Cuban um, part of um, Old Havana and the kind of the outskirts of Havana there. And really incredible music and art there that is just um, really something to be in awe of. We really enjoyed it. So um, where is this now? Oh, look at the gold dome. So that dome actually has more gold than any other um, roof. Um, but uh, yeah, so I don't know exactly the significance of it, but um, you know, again, it's right next to some of that architecture that they have there that is really traditional. And, um, but vibrant colors too, and. Yeah, everything is just vibrant colors. You know, they're old buildings, and you know, some of them are decaying, but you see them art, huh? yeah. Do you see those beautiful colors throughout everything? And so you're thinking about the old buildings. Tell, tell us more about the, because you know, we, we understand well, they had an economic. Yeah, uh, they were really run down, yeah. but um, actually right now the government of Cuba has been, um, they're shining it up 
a lot because the week after we left, a few days after we left, was the 500 anniversary of Havana. 500 aniversario de Havana. And it's just like, so they were really trying to, there were going to be a lot of dignitaries there, mm -hmm. not from the U.S., but other countries. So they were really focused on, you know, making it look as pretty as possible. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Great. And so, so um, who your hotel accommodations, how were they? Well, we actually chose to stay at an Airbnb because we wanted to support the Cuban government. Or, I'm sorry, not support, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> not support the Cuban government. Support the Cuban people. And that's how we were able to travel there. So if you're an American and you're traveling there for tourism, you know what, you want to go under that. Uh, support for the Cuban people yeah. visa. Oh, good. So that's why we chose to stay at an Airbnb. And it was lovely. We stayed in a uh, two-level home um, in an area called Vara, Vara, how do we how do I say that? Varado? Varado. 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 And four bedrooms, two kitchens, beautiful terrace overlooking the neighborhood. Um, on a good day, we could almost see the beach. <laughs> so, um, oh yeah, That's it was good. nice. It was really nice. We, we enjoyed our accommodations. We had a lovely host that cooked us breakfast every day. Oh, and nice. also set us up with drivers and helped us a lot with directions. And she even provided us with a cell phone. So if we got lost, which was easy to do, we could call her and she could help guide us back to our place. Did you yeah. need to speak Spanish to get through? I understand it sounds like you can speak Spanish, Carmen. Is that ne necessary for a tourist to be able to speak Spanish? No, but I'd say it's helpful. I think anytime you're going anywhere, in a, it's helpful if you speak the language there. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, you know, we were able to to get by, you know, with English. And, and to be honest, the Spanish there was really hard for me to understand um, because of their dialect of, you know, they don't pronounce the S's. So it, it, it takes some getting used to. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. But well, what an incredible trip. And so um, the visas to get over there, how difficult was that? It was pretty easy. You yeah, can get not them, difficult I think. at all. You can get them at the airport at the same day. Oh, I mean. really? The same day you take off, you can get them. We chose to get them from um, a travel agency in LA, just so we would have them in advance, mm -hmm. just in case there, if there was any issue. So we actually got them about a, maybe a month before we left. Right. Oh, good. You're prepared. Yeah. Well, what a great trip. And do you recommend it to other friends? Yeah. I mean, you have to, there are certain things that you have to know going into it that no. to expect. Um, you know, it's very hot. If you don't like hot weather, you might not like Cuba. Um, it's very humid. Um, the food. <laughs> so, you know, you have to keep in mind that it, it's a, it is a communist country um, and they don't, they're right next to the, you know, this huge nation that has everything, but they can't import from the U.S. So, you know, they, it, quality of food is very low there. It's very low quality food. And it's just, it, you know, they don't have spices. So there isn't a lot of flavor to the food, you know. Is it rice and beans and fish or what? <laughs> pork, a lot of pork, uh, rice, um, Fish? There's yeah, fish. Yeah, there's fish. We had some decent fish, actually. I think it's just more like you go to Cuba for the experience, for yeah. the culture and the music, but not the food. Yeah, okay. and the lovely people. Oh, Aww. amazing people. Well, we just are so excited that you came um, today to share your trip, and it's just so fun to see it through your eyes. We loved your beautiful video and pictures. So thank you so yeah. much for coming to Around the World, and Thanks, thank Rebecca. you for watching us around the world. My co-host, Deb Richards, um, you know, it's, it's, it's cough season. <laughs> so we, we thank her for co-hosting with us. And we hope you all come and watch us again on the next show of Around the World. We'll see you next time. Thanks to Mike Nicholson in the in, in the room behind me and, and dear Ken Baxter who have produced this show. And we love TVSB in Santa Barbara and we're so happy that they're producing and, and helping with the show. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for traveling with us today on Around the World. We hope you'll join us for another adventure next week. In the meantime, all of us at Around the World wish you happy trails.